this episode, we're going to round out our Toxic Masculinity Month. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming to the end. This is the last of the Toxic Masculinity episodes, and it's all about Loki. No, not Tom Hiddleston, although he, um, you know, if, if anybody also has ADHD, then you'll understand hyperfixation. And my hyperfixation on Tom Hiddleston has definitely led me <laughs> to <laughs> my Loki episode. But I, uh, I don't know. I just fucking, I just want to watch everything he's done. And then I can like, okay, I feel like I know his body of work. I've done it with like, I did it with Tom Hardy. I've done it with a ton of people. I'm like, okay, I feel like I really, I know them as an artist. I um, did that with Pete Davidson. It took me an afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally he's oh i love pete davidson oh my god i saw the most amazing meme someone was like i found this picture of my grandmother <laughs> when i was cleaning out her house and it's a picture from like 1940 of this young lady kissing a guy on the cheek and it's pete davidson <laughs> of course <laughs> it is <laughs> so yeah so today's episode is all about loki and we're talking real loki not tom hiddleston loki so there's gonna be i'm gonna throw it out there i'm gonna mispronounce some shit I'm going to do my best. I am nowhere near um, being Norse of any of any kind. Um, so, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. I will say, in researching this, Loki traditionally was a red-haired, pointy-nosed, curly-mustachioed fella in all of the artistic depictions. And, that tracks. Yeah. And so only later did he become the dark-haired pasty faced um, mole rat version uh, that we all know and love in the Marvel comics. And that was thanks to Stan Lee and whoever drew the Marvel comics. It was mainly his weird aversion to gingers. I think so. Like, I don't know a whole lot about Marvel or Stan Lee, so I'm not going to talk about it at all. He fucking hated gingers. Really? Yeah. That's a real thing? Yeah. He thought that they were weird mutants, but not in a X-Men good way. <laughs> I can never tell if you're being... Oh, no, I'm lying. Okay. I was going to keep it going for a little while. I was but. like, she looks real serious, but also kind of got a smirk. <laughs> and so when we talk, because I know we've talked a lot about people having Loki vibes, and uh, he was, he's just the trickster god. Like, he's, I feel like he's more human because he's sort of known for embodying not being a good, not being a good guy or a bad guy, sort of being a, he's like a big gray area. I'm going to go on a bit of a wild ride today. There's going to be some gender swapping. There's going to be some shape shifting. There's going to be a lot of horse sex. <laughs> and there's going to be lots of trolls. Um, and lots of banging. Like so lots it's pretty of... much just the internet. You're exactly. just giving us broad strokes of the internet. <laughs> exactly. All of my research came from different historical, ed you know, historical educational volumes. Um, and when those got a little too heady to read, I just swapped over to like Mythopedia to get like an <laughs> nice. easy breakdown. And I was like, oh, that's what they're trying to say. Just say that then. <laughs> yeah, that's when I was uh, doing research for the Dog Prince episode, I came into a lot of that where I'm like, OK, I just read a paragraph that only actually said three words. Yes. Right. The rest of it was just beating around the bush. It's like like a little kid who's asking you for something that, that they know that you're going to say no to. <laughs> Yep. That's pretty much Norse mythology. Totally. And they're like, and then, but then wait, but then, um, and then I swear I'll do this. And then you'll, and it's like, just fuck. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck do you want? Yeah. Just My life it. is ticking away. I am so much older than you. Just <laughs> fucking be direct with it. I know. Right. Um, so let's see. So he survived, he always survived his pranks mostly because of his wit and his cunning, but he didn't always survive unscathed. Um, so he was, <laughs> <laughs> he, now here's, here's all of our great keywords for the month. He was a devious deity known for his schemes, deceptions, and chaos, toxic personality <laughs> problems. A shapeshifter, um, with varied motives for his mischief, which included wealth, women, wisdom, and sheer pleasure. Um, which, yeah, he's very, John McAfee. I know, right? He's very hedonistic. So we've had... We've had old school Loki. We've had current Loki. We've got pale face mole rat Loki. We've got all different kinds of Lokis this month. 
Um, so while Loki was considered one of the gods, his father was a giant named Farvaudi and his mother, the minor goddess Laufey. Now Laufey was the, if you've seen the Thor movies, but with, from Marvel, they switched it up and made Laufey his frost giant father. No, they took some liberties with it, which is fine. I don't really care who his mom and dad were, to be honest. But he was this, his dad, who was a Jotun or a giant, his name Farbaudi meant cruel striker. <laughs> and his mother, uh, they don't know much about her. So I feel like that may have been not, not a happy marriage that produced him. Maybe like a, hey, I'm walking down this back alley and so is she. And now we're mom and dad kind of a situation. Oh, like how they do in Norway. Mm hmm Like Viking style unwanted motherhood. That sounds right. Um, so it was prophesied that he was going to fight on the side, uh, that Loki was going to, as an adult, fight on the side of the Jotnar, which were the uh, basically like the trolls. Um, not the gods, the giants, the trolls, all the inhuman entities during Ragnarok, which Ragnarok is their version of Armageddon. Armageddon. Yeah. And so during Armageddon, he was going to choose not to fight with the gods and he was going to basically be a, a race traitor because <laughs> he's half god, half troll. And so he he chooses um, well, no matter which side he chooses, the other side's going to be. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm just giving broad strokes right now. Because we're going to get into the mythology of different specific schemes. So I'm going to do a broad stroke on his history, his parents, his children. And then we're going to go into these specific stories of his mayhem. Because I think they're incredibly interesting. Um, so uh, Loki was... Um, how can I put this? He fathered children, but he also gave birth to children. So he has several children, um, one of which was Hel, who ruled Hel, the Norse underworld. Fenrir, the wolf, and he was like a giant fucking crazy war wolf. And Jor Jormungandr, uh, the sea serpent that encircles the world, and sleep near an eight-legged horse. So he, he specifically only gave birth and or sired um, animals, <laughs> which, you know, He's that's He's got cool. a type. He definitely has a type. Uh, he did marry the goddess Sigyn. Sigyn? I thought it was Signa, but it's definitely Sigyn, about whom little is known except by Loki. She had a son named Nari. Uh, but he also had um, Angerboda with a troll mistress that he had. Um, so he was just, he was just painting the walls with his... That's what the gods were doing then, yeah. though. They were slinging yogurt left yeah, right Yeah, that was kind of what, that was their <laughs> thing, dude. That was like their favesies. Yeah, he was super into it. So uh, Loki, along with Odin, Thor, and Freya, con constituted one of the four ruling deities of Norse thought. Um, so that seems to be most mm, sort of like, and yes, I know this is a hot take, um, the Virgin Mary, Jesus Christ, uh, Holy Ghost, and God himself. Uh, you know, because everything is all kind of, it's all kind of related, you know, it's I, yeah, all derivative of each other. Kind that of was thing. kind of one thing that I didn't understand uh, growing up is in, di in some religions, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are all like different people which i can i like okay i can get that whatever but like when they're all the same person i'm like wait so he banged a preteen and then <laughs> became his own son slash dad yeah dave gets hung up on that too because in judaism there's no there's no jesus um, as we and love shit makes call a lot him. more sense. <laughs> it really yeah. does. It really does. He always gets hung up on that. How is he his own grandpa thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's he's his own. I, 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 I don't, I don't get it. And then, like, was the Holy Spirit just like a bunch of responses that he pre-recorded while he was on Earth? Ooh, interesting. Like his. You know, like when you email somebody and they're like on vacation and they're like, I'm out of the office with like, was that the Holy Spirit? <laughs> yeah, maybe. 
Maybe. I like to picture it like the fart that God left behind that's lingering. And you're like, is that a fart cloud? Well, yeah, but it's God's fart cloud. So, like, we can't just call it a fart. We have to call it something special. Don't we? I don't know. Call it a boof cloud. <laughs> a boof cloud. I like it. The Father, the Son, the Holy Boof Cloud. <laughs> Dude, that's our slogan. That's our next slogan. I fucking love it. Did you ever watch Miracle Workers? Um, it, Steve Buscemi was God. I did. I watched like that season and then the medieval season. Okay. And then the Oregon Trail season wasn't out yet. Oh, okay. I really liked that hot take that was like, Steve Buscemi was God, but then, like, he went home to his mom and dad, and he was like, but look, I made Earth. And they're like, uh, have you seen what your sister did? You know, where it was like, he's like, oh, man, my shit's, <laughs> my shit's kind of weak. <laughs> I feel like, yeah. I feel like that, that seems right. That seems that seems to go with, like, the, the boof. That's Things the boof. just seem a little bit more interconnected than, like, yeah. there's one thing, and we have to kill everyone who doesn't believe this. Like, I mean... Do you? That's kind of extreme. Right? I don't have to kill everyone who likes seafood, even though I don't like seafood. And that actually poses more of a hazard than people believing differently than me. Because, like, if if I'm in the break room and, like, there's a Presbyterian and a Buddhist monk and a non-practicing Catholic and, like... A Satanist? And a Satanist (laughs) and an agnostic... I don't I don't care but if I'm in the break room and somebody's microwaving salmon I care on a lot of fucking levels <laughs> so the stakes are actually a lot higher ah. yeah so I don't know that might be my next crusade I that, like that's it. my next bloody battle is seafood eaters oh, you guys are going down I know I'm in the minority but dude you're not I mean we're gonna no, be a I two wo- we're gonna be a two woman army we are we're gonna we're gonna bring it we maybe. Have to. Dude, no one should eat. The Ugh. people who like seafood really like it, though. Yeah, they really, really do. <sighs> yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> Which, I mean, the Norse do. Like, have you oh, ever seen, Oh, like, fish? Oh. Or what's the other Ugh. one? Uh, like, it's some weird cuttlefish slurry. Lutefisk. Lutefisk, yeah. <laughs> Ugh. No. I bet, I bet Loki didn't like that stuff. I fucking hope not. I hope <laughs> that he just ate lingonberry jam on weird norse crackers oh god i bet he did i bet he also smeared it on like chicks buttholes and just fucking nom, 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 yeah nom, probably nom, nom. <laughs> or on his own oh dude and then turned himself into a snake yeah see if i could shape shift yeah dude the possibilities are endless <laughs> um let's see so some of this stuff now that i'm looking at it is like not super important but it's a little interesting so the name loki has long been likened to the old norse logi meaning fire and while loki like fire was destructive and unpredictable the similarity between the two words was probably just a coincidence um because a newer breakdown of the name loki uh is more like knot or tangle which um has a literal connection to loki um sometimes being referred to with spiders or spiders were, were referred to as Loki from time to time as their webs caught unsuspecting victims in a similar manner, which I really like. I yeah, thought that was worth mentioning. I could see that. Um, he was also referred to as a knot, K-N-O-T, for his tendency to go against the other gods. Um, now, this is interesting. He seldom engaged in physical combat and as such carried no weapons. His only weapon was his mind, <laughs> which I don't know if I like that more less or the same as having like one fucking badass like hammer you know or whatever i don't know my mind tends to take lots of naps when i need it most so i feel like if it was up to me to just like macgyver together a fucking weapon in the moment when i needed it i would not do so well no no, if I had the ability to MacGyver together a weapon, I would make other abilities to not have to use a weapon. Oh, totally. Um, I got so many yawns today. I don't know why. Oh, dude. I feel like all the coffee is in my body and none of it went oh, to my brain. I didn't even get <laughs> coffee today. Oh, no. I Yeah, I got nothing. Oh. And I slept like shit. Oh, no. Sleep by pizza is, yeah. I ate like 
four slices, like four big ass fucking slices, and then I passed out. And then I woke up after all of it had expanded in my stomach, and mm. I had like a hundred percent heartburn, and I was like, oh, oh no, why is this happening to me? <sighs> Dude, last night on Uber Eats was buy one get one free at Namaste, the Indian restaurant. Oh, over. Oh shit! I didn't know that they were still open. We ordered so much Indian food so much Indian food because all the shit we love was buy one get one free and you couldn't mix and match so if you bought one thing of um of samosas you just got double samosas you know and so we've got like two vindaloo we've got two pakora Dude, like we have i so wish i would have known food. next time that happens you need to let me know that okay i will <laughs> i know and dave dave and i were just sitting at the table like a couple of neanderthals just going <sighs> it's so hot <laughs> <laughs> just like okay i'm going in for another bite <laughs> oh it was uh, we'll be shitting fire today no doubt about oh yeah it. absolutely <laughs> so um let's see so one day when loki was feeling mischievous he decided to cut off all of sif's hair now sif was traditionally thor's wife we all know how he felt about thor um she was known for her beauty and her flowing blonde locks so naturally, when Thor got, uh, when Thor discovered Loki's prank, he flew into a rage and threatened to beat him to death. Uh, desperate to quell Thor's anger, Loki promised to find the Black Elves and have them make a replacement for the lock of hair. Which, um, I mean, dude, it grows, right? Yeah, I like, was like, it's only back. one lock. Like, it's not like he, you know, yeah. shaved off one of her eyebrows or something. I mean, maybe Thor's like a Tom Cruise where he's like, my wife must look perfect at all times. I mean, I could see that. Yeah. Thor's got a lot of small dick vibes. Oh, my God. Right? Right? Which makes me want to think that Chris Hemsworth does, too, but he doesn't. Like, no, Chris Hemsworth. Him, oh, BD. He might have a small dick, but, like... He seems like he'd be real cool to have a beer with. Dude, right? Real fun. I would laugh really hard with Chris Hemsworth. and like, With all of the Hemsworths. Dude, I think I would be down to fuck Liam. Ugh. But not Chris. None of, I, I wouldn't. None of them. I think just because Liam has Loki vibes and he's kind of mean. And he's brunette. And he's like, he was like real mean to Miley Cyrus. I definitely wouldn't <laughs> do it then. I might. I like Miley Cyrus. <sighs> I don't not like her, but I like him more, I think. Yeah. Sexually speaking. She's a little she's a little kid rock for my taste. He's a little more Australian kid rock? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I remember that episode of Punked where she like set him up and I don't remember what it was. It was like somebody stole his parking space or something and they've got hidden cameras all in the car. And he immediately goes from, like, zero, you know, because he's, like, getting ready to back in and someone comes in and, like, whoop, 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 and takes the parking spot or whatever. He immediately goes from zero to, like, I will kill your firstborn. He starts screaming. He's like, motherfucker, what? And she's like, whoa, whoa, Liam, whoa, whoa, stop. And he's like, you shut your mouth. He gets out to go, like, beat the guy's ass. And they had to, like, preemptively pull out the cameras and be like, dude, no, no, it's punked. He was like, that's not funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I maybe I'm rethinking this. Yeah, I don't. He's a Karen. <laughs> he's Karen, which means he probably has, he probably has testicles that are swollen, and it and like, maybe like a Bosch circumcision. <laughs> maybe that's why he's I just so don't angry. find him attractive. I the like... only Hemsworth that's attractive is Chris Hemsworth. The rest of them, just <sighs> aren't. They're fucking weaselly. I have a weakness for blue eyes and dark hair, but there is the weasel gene in them for sure. I feel like Liam got all the, like, old prisoner vibes. Like, all the old prisoner DNA went to Liam. He's the one that plays the, uh, the dolphin guy, yeah? The dolphin guy. No, that's Chase Crawford. Oh, I do in the boys. not like him. Oh, Chase Crawford? I do fucking not like him. I am not a fan of him physically. He's a great actor. But yeah. But he repulses me on several levels. For sure. Remember He when... reminds me of my old drummer who, once again, repulses me <laughs> on several levels. Not Maddie, the one before him. <laughs> Remember when that chick was, like, putting her fingers in his gills yeah. on that episode was, of The oh, Boys? Oh, that was so that uncomfortable. Was so... Like, shut up, you freak. Oh, it was so oh, gross. Oh, that yeah. was so uncomfortable. I feel like in real life he might be a scientologist 
I don't know why. Yeah. I feel like Kanye West has really bad breath and Chase Crawford <laughs> might be a Scientologist. Kanye West probably always has stuff under his nails. Dude, I bet. I bet he also has like crazy... <laughs> crazy toes that like you know how when you wear the wrong size shoe for too many years and all your toes start to point like one way they they all turn to the left or whatever because your shoes are too narrow Hmm. i feel like he would choose fashion over function and like his toes would be all crazy smooshed together like ballet i don't know why i don't know why this is my my own personal insanity i think that he would just have like really thick toenails dude yeah like like, where you have to use the dog... The Dremel. The dog Dremel yeah. on them, like... And all the toes kind of overlap each other because they've been shoved into fancy shoes too much. I am full of hot takes today. <laughs> I have all... <laughs> dude, if we ever... So Megan and I were talking yesterday about, like, if we ever got famous and we ended up in a green room with, green room with a celebrity, like... Oh, God. You know, what would we do? But I feel... <laughs> I feel like my words are going to come back to haunt me. Someday if we ever got famous, Kanye West would be like, in a song, he'd be like, yo, bitch, my toes are straight or something. So if I think that if we did meet, uh, are Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson still going out even? As of today, which is January 30th, they are still together. Oh, good for them. Uh, if we somehow saw them... Uh, I, I think that that would probably, you would, I'd be like, Aaron, botch it for me. I'd be like, Ooh, I got some Kool-Aid. I'll be right back. <laughs> but I think that you'd like, you'd go in there like trying to put Kool-Aid on a dress, but you'd like yeah. stop. Cause maybe she's like really pretty in real life and smells good. And then you'd be like, are Kanye's toes weird? Oh yeah. 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 I'd be like, you want some Kool-Aid? Can you tell me about his toes? It looks <laughs> like he has cavities. Am I right? <laughs> She'd be like who the fuck are you? But like, don't worry about it. What are we doing here anyway? I mean, come on, come on. You got to tell me, dude, you got to tell me. But, but by then Megan has already swooped in. Pete Davidson is long gone. There's just a trail of fucking smoke and dust. And, <laughs> and by swooped in, she means I've been standing in the doorway awkwardly staring at him. And then you and just he's like, finally picked up on it and yeah. he feels deeply unsettled. But you shake. And then she- he grabs Kim and says, let's go. No, 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 no. You got to like, you gotta like shake a vape pen at him and be like, "Come on, you want you want to go vape while well, your girlfriend talks about her ex husband," and then he'd be like, "Yeah, totally, let's go vape and eat fucking cherries." And you'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, it's a green room. They have cherries." You are so optimistic. <laughs> I really am. You are so fucking optimistic. I am. What would genuinely happen is, yeah, like Aaron would go and she'd see Kim, and she'd like stare at her because she's, so she's so pretty and she smells good. And she looks like her skin is soft. Mm -hmm. And then you'd, like, go in about the Kanye stuff. And then she'd kind of be like, uh. And you'd be like, can I touch your skin? It looks really soft. And she'd be like, oh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. Meanwhile, Pete Davidson's staring at you guys, mouth agape. And I'm staring at him, mouth agape. And then his eyes slowly turn to me. (laughs) Just open mouth breathing, looking at him. (laughs) Really? Like a McPoyle? (laughs) Like a McPoyle? (laughs) And then you do the, like... Yeah. <laughs> yes. And and then he just grabs her and is like, "Uh, we have to go, baby. We gotta get out of here." See, I would I would have a lot in common with her. I'd be like, "You, babe, you got psoriasis. I got psoriasis. Let's talk about our psoriasis. Because up here is real good for you, but I got rosacea. So maybe you can tell me <laughs> who your dermatologist is." So you would be Danny DeVito, and I'd I would be, be Charlie. A hundred percent. Yes. That completely yeah. tracks. Yeah. See, and that would work really well. <laughs> and if we flippity flop that, because we've talked about this, and we were in a green room with Tom Hiddleston. Um, Megan would just let him know that I'm dying of cancer and I just need him to take me out to dinner and then like for a cuddle. That's Unless all. Unless there was a really interesting thing going on, uh, like a really interesting feature. And let's say I was in between makeup, in which case I would be Dennis Reynolds on D-Day and oh. I would be like, give me a moment. I can put on another woman's face. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and he would scamper off. Maybe alert security. <laughs> but then we'd have to, we'd have to bash him and put him on a boat. Where he would have no choice but to cuddle with me and eat curry. Um, And that would be a dentist move also. Dude. It's so weird. Did you listen? We're getting way off track, but I'm okay with it. Did you listen to that episode of the Sunny Podcast where they were talking about how Mac almost got in a fight at the In-N-Out Burger? Yeah. Dude, if you haven't listened to the Always Sunny Podcast, you need to. And there's this standalone episode. It's like 20, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. They're talking about how Mac, the real guy, Rob McElhenney, almost got in a fight at the In-N-Out Burger. And I was, I was fucking... My boner 
was so shriveled when I heard Dennis go, yeah, it's not worth it. I would have just let him go in front of me. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. I was but like, that's Dennis. a responsible thing to do. I, I, I think that Nick is like, Nick is the type of person who would go and See? like tap on their window and be like, fuck off. I would too. And so like, I know, but that's really embarrassing to me because oh, yeah. I like to keep like, you know, I like to act. I, I like to maintain social norms. Well, and Charlie had a really good point because I was on board with Mac the entire time until Charlie or Dennis, one of the two, was like, dude, it's not your job to police the world. And I was like, oh, my God, you're right. And then immediately I was like on Charlie's side because Charlie was like, <laughs> he's like, you just fuck it. You just let him go. Although I don't think I would have done that. I think I this is classic Aaron, right? If I size up the person and I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing this. I would back out of line gun my engine and like real dramatically just like leave that in and out and drive to the next in and out burger <laughs> it's in california yeah there's another one real close i feel like oh no no like if i was in in and out burger in oh, california i was like so you would go from woodburn to like <laughs> good point no if i was in california i would oh. be like there's gonna be another one close by i'm gonna let you know that it's your fault i'm leaving even if you don't care but I'm not going to get into a fight with you. I'm just going to go to a different In-N-Out burger. Oh, no. I would have yeah. closed the gap and just stared at them. No. <laughs> I know. I have this whole mixture of reactions. Like, what do you do when you're in a situation where a social injustice has occurred, but it's only over a hamburger? Well, and here's the thing, though. Yeah. His kids were in the car. Yeah. See, that does and change so everything. It, it absolutely does. Because, like, there's been a handful of times that I wanted to do stupid shit, but Alex was in the car. Or, like, I wanted to, you know, be very angry and reckless. Or even, like, wanted to help somebody out, but Alex was in the car. Oh, dude, having my kids in the car has been my saving grace more the times than I can count. Because I know they're going to figure out I'm a jackass eventually. I don't want to, <laughs> like, hamper that process any sooner than it has to be. So. I don't think Alex is ever going to figure it out. Oh, he's such a sweet boy. He loves you so much. He's never going to figure it out. Oh, and also, you're not, so... <laughs> I don't know that I feel like that little bit of media really turned the tide for me because they were like, we're 47 year old men, you know, or we're 44 year old men or whatever it was. Sorry, not 47, 44. Um, I'm 40. They're like, definitely we would have been in the same school at the same time. Like, I have no business behaving like this. This is a young man's game. <laughs> right. Like, all usually just having work customer service for so long, and we kind of got into this, um, I think, in the last episode. Usually, I just won't rage out on people because it never, ever fucking pays off. Not once have I ever been like, yeah, I'm really glad I did that. Oh, never. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, I just, I stopped doing that a really, really long time ago. I think I was, like, five or six. Yeah, see, and that's when <laughs> most people do. That's, that's like, healthy and appropriate. Me and my bro Loki here, though, never did learn our lessons until it was too late. Um, so, yeah. So getting back to so he cut a little bit of, of Thor's wife's hair off. And then he went to Svartalheim, a land home to black elves, dwarves, and other non-human entities located in the bowels of the earth. So I'm immediately picturing, like, centipede people or, like... The descent mole people. people. Mole people. Mole <laughs> That's a hundred percent of it. Yeah. So he found he found a great craftsman um, who soon fashioned a new set of hair. So you went below to get a crab person to make a wig? Thank you. The crab people make the best wig. They make it out uh, they make it out of chitin. Well, what is that? Uh, it is the stuff that their shells are made of. <gasps> yes. Ooh, cool. Yeah, it's really neat. Um, they're able to spit it thin enough that it's wispy because that's what mermaid hair is actually made of also is chitin. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, they can spin it, you know, uh, almost to the consistency of silk. Dude, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Okay, that, I take it back. That That's a fucking dope-ass wig. Um, so he got the wig, but immediately turned around and started to like oh you like this wig this wig is so cool i'm taking this wig for free fuck you i'm not paying you <laughs> and they were like dude what what he's like going back to asgard baby Woo! oh he knew exactly what he was doing he <laughs> oh, was yeah. like i'm taking this wig for my brother's wife yeah. his name is thor mine's loki yeah. we live here come and get it <laughs> exactly because he's he's the thinking man's thor 
Um, yeah, I like so, that. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, like that's real crafty. I like it. And he definitely he started some shit with that move. I think that's real legit. Um, so another story began when a hill giant and a master builder approached the gods and offered to erect an imp- in- impregnable, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say impenetrable is more an appropriate word, fortress that would protect the gods from enemies. Is um, it more appropriate because Loki can impregnate anything? Yes, that's true. <laughs> um, in exchange, they only wanted the sun, the moon, and Freya's hand in marriage. I only want everything. Yeah, I just want all okay. the things. Everything Why are you have. being so selfish? I just want it all. <laughs> exactly. Duh. It's fine. And so Loki and the gods, they, they minus Freya, they all like had a little huddle and they were like, oh, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Uh, yeah, we get a sweet ass fortress. Yeah, done. You can have her. And, uh, you know, I don't think I don't think anything bad is going to come from this agreement. <laughs> no, what could? Um, so with the fortress nearly complete, um, fretting at the prospect of losing Freya forever, the gods were like, oh, shit. Well, we didn't really think that one through because Freya is the one who, like, makes the popcorn at the end of the night. And she definitely does all our laundry Maybe we can renege on that part. And so they decided to sabotage the hill giant's, like, special fortress. And Loki transformed himself into a mare and paraded around in front of the main worker guy's stallion. This is actually my favorite. Yeah. This is my favorite Loki. Enticing him with her feminine charms. So not only did Loki shapeshift into a lady horse, um, into a horse, but a lady horse and, like, a sexy, seductress lady horse. Um, so, uh, the work immediately came to a halt, enraging the hill giant, and, uh, the hill giant attacked all the gods for reneging on their, on their whole deal, and, um, Thor, Thor was like, "Mm, I'm gonna go hunt some trolls, but, uh, I'll be back, cross my heart, (laughs) And so he fucked off for most of the battle. It came back at the end and smoted the tr- the hill troll where he stood. But Loki's romantic dalliances had taken a serious turn. All the horse sex um, got Loki pregnant. <laughs> so Lady Loki. Will he ever learn? I know. He's so silly. So Lady, Lady Mare Loki um, gave birth. Uh, to a baby gray horse that had eight feet. And this horse is the best among gods and men and was none other than sleep near an eight legged stallion who became Odin's favorite horse. So. I mean, all the same, at least like he didn't have to give birth to the horse, like how Odin gave birth to Freya. Oh, I don't know that one. Can you give me broad strokes? I like, through his fucking head, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, damn. Like, yeah, like he split open his skull and like she came out or some shit. <gasps> like they do in Alien? Like You should probably fact check that, but I'm pretty sure it's correct. That sounds good to me. That yeah. was kind of the funny thing too. Like that was so the horse story is like my favorite with Loki because like people got really up in arms that Loki's queer and it's like I mean he's not just queer yeah he also fucks animals exactly like he's not just one thing like (laughs) like in the Loki series where Tom Hiddleston is like yeah I've loved men and women people were like what it's because it's on fucking pearl clutching Disney exactly like Like, he's bisexual like no he's all sexual exactly he likes he just fucks anything and everything yeah he doesn't doesn't mind (laughs) (laughs) um so then there we, we have the story of the murder of Baldur the Norse god of warmth goodness and spring Um, which at this point is where Loki gets, he takes a little bit of a dark turn and turns into like a baddie. Um, he decides to just kill, kill Baldur for like whatever reason. Like he looked at him wrong or he was like jealous of his fucking sweet ass shoes or whatever. There's not, there's, they don't define the reason mostly. Baldur's mother, Frigg, having had premonitions of this dire event, had already spoken to every animate and inanimate object in the world, convincing them all not to harm her son. 
So she was like, hey, bottle of wine, don't bash my son. Hey, knife, don't stab my son. And they were just like, okay, cool. Hmm, problematic. But whatever. Okay, maybe she has like a set of sweet tits or like a giant, a giant, you know, fucking cookie that she lets everyone have a nibble of. And they're like, oh yeah, cool. Okay, we, we, we'll be good. We won't hurt your son. Because she's like, all right, I got it. Everything's covered. He's going to be fine. I talked to everyone and everything in the whole world. <laughs> but unfortunately for Baldur, Loki was able to discover the single item that had escaped the concerned mother's notice. Mistletoe. So he proceeded to take the small plant and fashion it using his magical abilities into a potentially deadly arrow. Next, he convinced uh, Baldur's blind brother, Hod, to fire the missile which embedded itself in the joyful god's heart and killed him instantly. Why? Because he wanted to trick his brother into being the one who killed him instead of him being the one who killed him, I guess. Why did he have to die? I know. In general. Mostly because he had a sweet pair of shoes and, like, was super happy. And Loki was like, nope, I can't have it. Um, you mm. know, that was definitely a dick move. I, I mean. Yeah, that is, like, <laughs> definitely a dick move. When Hod, the blind brother, discovered the evil that he had been involved with, he fled into the woods and was never seen again. On the other hand, though, Loki was captured and sentenced to a torturous fate. Um, eventually, the gods tracked down Loki, who was hiding in a pool at the base of a waterfall as a salmon. And, I mean, eventually, you know, they've been looking and looking and, and they were like, dude, that, that salmon looks a little weird, right? Is that fucking fish smiling at me? <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, that's Loki. <laughs> He's just been chilling here. Um, so... Um, because Odin is a bit vengeful, um, he he took he hunted down Loki's two children, Narfi and Vali. He transformed Vali into a wolf, who immediately turned upon his brother and tore at his throat. He then Odin then took the the guts and the innards of Loki's dead son and used them to bind Loki to three slabs of stone on the underside of the world. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Right, that's a bit much then suspended an enormous snake over the trickster god's head so that its venom would drip down upon his body. <laughs> Which, like, damn, dude. Why not just kill him? Exactly. exactly. It's the whole Batman thing. Yeah. Of, like, you know, Batman's a little fucking complicit. Yeah. Not killing any of these super dangerous fucking people. Yeah, let me just put him in jail, and then, like, they'll keep breaking out, and I'll keep putting him in jail. And then Loki's wife had to sit beside him and collect the venom in a bowl and had to empty the bowl out whenever it filled up. And during those times, the searing venom would drip into Loki's eyes, causing pain and writhing, and that would shake the entire world. And he was forced to endure this until Ragnarok, which was, like, at the end of time. <laughs> so, you know, I mean... I don't know. That's just and he like learned a lot. nothing from it. Nothing. He was like, "Well, that's over now, right?" And I'm done with it. Cool. Uh, schemes resumed. <laughs> that fucking um, guy. So, um, at let's see. So in the 19th century, he Loki is is often presented as a dark-haired Semitic fifth columnist. So I had to look up what a fifth columnist is. A fifth column, I, have no idea. I know it's like a it's 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 an outdated term, but it's not an outdated idea. Um, it's any group of people who undermine a larger group from within, usually in favor of an enemy group or nation. So it's like QAnon, the Nazis, um, oh, all the like, all the jerks who you know. It's like. <laughs> Loki it's, probably, if Loki was real, would have been absolutely invented QAnon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's like the Montreal separatists. It's like the people who want Texas to be its own nation. You know, it's so a fifth column is... I'm not entirely against that. I'm not either, man. You do you. I don't need to go to Texas for Yeah, anything. take a lot of the rest of that area with you and also <laughs> Idaho. Exactly. Idaho is scary prepper country. It's fucking terrible. Sorry if you live there, but... Yeah, truly. Yeah, truly. Truly sorry. <laughs> truly fucking sorry. So that's when he started appearing as, like, a dark-haired... A dark-haired, um... Anti-Semite? Because 
they sort of depicted him within the he shows up in Nazi propaganda like to put it uh, yeah they're like oh trickster god yeah let's take his image and we'll use it in our Nazi propaganda and it's truly disturbing you can find some of it online uh, but it made me like super not into it um let's see what else is there um, he's in a lot of operas. He's in a lot of poems. And as someone who can appreciate a poem by not reading it, I decided not to include those. <laughs> <laughs> I love poetry. I fucking detest <laughs> reading poetry, especially poetry I didn't write. And that I don't write poetry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's generally accepted as being gender fluid now. And in 2008, five black smokers were discovered between Greenland and Norway. And I was like, I took pause. I was like, black smokers? Is there like is like Dave Chappelle it was just standing the, on <laughs> yeah there's like only five black people in Norway and for obvious reasons they all fucking smoke yeah they're like we are the only five people yeah um, but it turns out it's like the ceramic thing that you put like fish in to smoke like a, a smoker oh, okay that's black for whatever yeah, I reason. thought that it was just like a black dude who's like you know it's fucking cold here I shaved my head because they kept asking <laughs> to touch my hair <laughs> And it's it's me if I can do anything to get these weird fucks to not talk to me, I'm going to do that thing. He's like once a month I have to go into town to get whale blubber so I don't get ashy. But like I mean that's the only thing that I can use. It's like some sort of like like coconut oil, some sort of pure fat um oil. Yeah, and to... I definitely don't think that they would have coconut. I don't know why, no. but I I think that for me, I hate being cold. I hate like the idea of most Norse things uh because usually like when I see Norse stuff I'm like oh white supremacy okay yeah, yeah. and I just immediately check out yeah um but yeah I hate being cold I hate Norse things I hate fish like I I think yeah I would definitely be friends with those like five smoking <laughs> black people yeah I'd, right I'd be like, dude you guys are the only not <laughs> shitty people here <laughs> What the fuck is any of this? And they'd be like, oh. I don't know, man. Like, you created it. I'd be like, no, no, I had, I had nothing. My skin may be lily white, but I have nothing to do with these yeah, people. <laughs> I stay the fuck away. I stay so the fuck away. I live in Oregon. Exactly. Another super <sighs> problematic state. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in 2008, five black smokers were, di were discovered between Greenland and Norway. I'm assuming they were fairly well spread out. Um, the most northern northernly group so far discovered and given the name Loki's Castle as their shape reminded discoverers of a fantasy castle. And Loki was appropriate name for a field that was so difficult to locate. So these five black smokers, they don't know what they are. They don't know what they did. They know that they're probably historic and maybe maybe like, uh, you know, from caveman times. Hmm. And so they were just like, eh, fuck it, let's call it Loki. They're little Loki's castles because they're bootylicious and a little sexy and super, super pain in the ass to find. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of interesting. That is interesting. And after all that research, I was like, I'm done. And um, I closed out Loki and I started watching I Saw the Light, which is where Tom Hiddleston plays Hank Williams. Um, the movie was problematic you know that's some good casting though i never oh, i never thought about casting. that yeah because he's got like bird features he does and he's even fucking skinnier in this movie tom hiddleston this is the movie people should know him for mm -hmm. he sings all the songs no shit he is rail thin he is fantastic you would never know this dude's british like you would mm. never British people seemingly have an easy time doing, like, southern accents. Yeah, just so like Americans good. have a really easy time doing Cockney. Because yeah. it's just an exaggerated version of whatever. That's so true. And he's so good in it. And I felt... I didn't know Hank Williams died when he was 29. I had no idea. I didn't know his fucking first wife was such a bitch. I didn't know that Hank Williams Jr. was mm -hmm. not actually named Hank Williams Jr. And that his stage mom made him perform as Hank Williams Jr. because she wanted hmm. all the money. I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. Um, his name was Randall Bocephus Williams. Um, That's why he goes by Bocephus sometimes. Yeah, it's it's so sweet because, like, Tom Hiddleston, he's like, there's my boy Bocephus, and this little boy's just like, ha, 
god, he's like a toddler, and he's so cute, and he's dressed like a little cowboy. It is such a good, it is such a good movie. The reason I say it's problematic is because the storytelling and the way that it is edited together is not done well. But it is a fantastic movie, and it's on sale on Amazon Prime right now for like three dollars. You can go get it, watch it. It's fucking brilliant. Um, and I love him even more because of it. And I was like, Ooh, do I want to do a Hank Williams deep dive? And then I was like, no, I don't know anything about Hank Williams or I know Hank three a little bit. I've never, I couldn't name a song by Hank three, but I know he's real cool. I guess. I, um, I've listened to an entire album, uh, like 15 years ago and I liked it. Ah, oh, see, I feel like I'd like Hank three. I think that it's one of those things for me anyway, that like, I like the actual thing, but the people who like also that thing um, ruin it for me and make me not admit that I like it. That's how I feel about the cramps. Hmm. I, I can like, see that. I like it, but I mean. Yeah, rockabilly dudes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <sighs> real mixed bag those ones are. Yeah, it is. Which actually, <laughs> it, that's actually a real good segue. If you join us after the episode on our Patreon, and I'll make it public, we are going to be going through... We're going to do nails and music videos again today. This will be the fourth session. Um, and I made up a playlist of the weirdest fucking shit. And it, and it perfectly embodies who I am as a person. I'm expecting a lot of like Gogo Bordello and Tom Waits. Oh, there's only one Tom Waits. No Gogo Bordello. There's hmm. a, so it's like, um, I think there would be some, there's a lot of things on there that I've never admitted publicly that I am a fucking huge fan of. And so, um, yeah, you should come check it out on our Patreon. Also, our website will be uh, up and ready soon with merch on it. We've been designing all kinds of cool merch. Um, We'll throw it up on our Insta. Uh, We don't have a Twitter or anything, but we've got our YouTube channel. You can catch some good stuff there. And, yeah, like, join us on the flip side for some fucking nails and music videos because we're going to have some good shit. I might have to listen to a Hank 3 song. Oh yeah, check it out. I I have um I have one in mind actually Aww, that you yeah. might enjoy. Dude, join us. You'll enjoy it. And that's it for today. Da, 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 da,